I'm Kate and I make junk journals and today we are using a five stitch pamphlet stitch to sew in three signatures to, into your junk journal. So I've heard from several people now that the worst part of making junk journals is sewing in the signatures. And I was pretty shocked when I heard that because that's the best part. I love sewing in the signatures. It makes me feel so cool, like I'm making a real book. So today I'm gonna show you how I like to sew in my signatures and I'm gonna be sewing three signatures into one book. And I have done this one time before and it was in the middle of a really long tutorial. So hopefully this could be a good resource for you guys that when you need a refresher or just to kind of remember, it'll be easy just to look how to do this. And I'm also here to hopefully convince you that this is fun. So I have here my junk journal that I made for myself and I've finished all of the signatures and I have three signatures here. And then I also finished the cover. So this is ready to go. So let's get these sewn in. The first thing I need to do is get a piece of paper, just any sort of discarded piece, and it really doesn't matter what's on it. I like to use blank ones because then I can just visually see everything, but I have used pattern paper, scrapbook paper, book paper, just whatever is around. The only thing it needs to be is the same size as your spine. So let's take our scratch piece of paper, and so if I put it this way, that is too short. So I'm gonna have to fold it this way, and I'm just gonna fold this paper to match that back spine. So I'll just press that to make that corner have a crease so that it will be easy to trim it right there. Okay, let's hold that up and see if that is right. That looks like it fits in there really nicely. And now we just need to adjust the height so that that matches. And I will just fold that up until that goes right along the edge. And the more accurate it is, the easier it will be to line everything up. All right, are you with me so far? See, isn't this so fun? Cutting papers. Just kidding, that's not even the fun part. The fun is yet to come. So now this part really depends on how many signatures you have. We have three signatures, so I need to make three three lines evenly distributed on this page. To do that, I am going to fold it in half, just like that. And so there's our first crease right in the middle. And if I just had one signature, then that's all I would need. To make our other two lines, I'm just gonna take this and fold it to that center line. And while this does not have to be exactly perfect, the closer to perfect you can get your lines, the straighter your book will be and the more beautiful your pages will line up. So really try to just get this as best as you can. Now, I'm not saying do it perfect just because I know you perfectionists out there will spend way too much time on this and close enough is close enough. So just try to get it straight, but it really doesn't have to be 100% perfect. Just your eye can visually kind of see that those look straight, so it is good enough. So now let's do our other side and same thing. We're just gonna fold that to the center line. Okay, so now we have our three folds and they're evenly distributed and pretty parallel to each other. So that will look really nice. And those are the guides for each signature. So those will all fit nicely right on that spine. Now go ahead and take your piece of paper and we're gonna make some folds so that we can mark our creases for the pamphlet stitch. I am going to be doing a five stitch pamphlet stitch. You can also do three stitches, but like I said, this is the most fun thing ever. So why would you just do three when you could do five? And the five stitches will make your journal more secure. So that's another reason I like it. So take your paper and the first stitch, we're just going to fold it in half and make our first fold line right there. Now we're going to do a tri-fold. This is less important to be perfect, but still it will visually look beautiful if you can get these even. It won't have as much of an effect on the strength and the use of your book, but the outside stitches will look even. So not as structurally important to be even, but visually it will look a little better if it is. Okay, now we need a pen or a pencil. You see how all of our little folds have made these little X's? I'm just going to put a little dot so that I can see it better. If you can really clearly and easily see those folds, this is not necessary, but just makes it a lot easier to just look and see exactly what's going on when you're using your guide. Something else that is nice is to write a T at the top of your guide because then as you're transferring it from your signatures to your spine, 
you remember which one is the top. And if you didn't fold them exactly evenly, then they'll still line up. And so you don't wanna go mixing up the top and bottom because then things just might not fit. So we're gonna put a T there. And then this is the orientation of our template. And now here's the first fun part. You're going to need an awl. Get an awl. That is my message to you. I think I've said this in several other videos and even my mother-in-law said it when she was with me. These are really not that expensive. You can get them on Amazon. I got mine in a whole book binding kit and it was awesome. Makes your life easier. If you're sitting there at home and be like, but I want to do it this very minute and I don't have an awl. You can try using a fat needle and backing it with something and making your own rigged awl. But I have done this and it was kind of miserable so I don't recommend it. So get an awl, that is my message. Maybe that's why people don't like to do this part. Maybe they don't have awls. If you're someone who doesn't like sewing in signatures, tell me why, because I'm really curious. To me, I'm like, uh, this is the best thing ever. Don't you want to feel cool and like you accomplished stuff or like you're a bookmaker? Yeah, totally. So I've just clipped on this so that I, as I'm working, it won't slide around. And I'm gonna take my awl and I'm just gonna stab a hole on all of those little circles that I marked. And I'm stabbing it in about that deep. This is my preferred depth. As you can see, the awl gets fatter the closer it gets to the top. So if you wanna make really fat holes, you're gonna push it all the way through. If you wanna make little tiny holes, then you're just gonna put a little bit in. But I do it about, what is that? Not quite a third of the way through, maybe a fourth, somewhere in between there. You know, I'm not exact. But that way it's fat enough to be able to easily sew in without it being so tight. But it's not so wide to where it's unnecessarily wide. Oh, and it also really depends on the kind of string that you're using. So if I'm using a thick string, I'm gonna wanna push it in a little deeper. And if I'm using thinner string, then I don't have to push it quite as deep. So let's carry on and poke these little holes. So soothing, so cool. Okay, so that's the last one. So now all of those are holes in my spine. So we'll go ahead and remove it, slide this away, bring in my signatures. So I need to go through my signatures and make sure that they're in the order that I want them to be. And I also need to make sure that all the pages are facing the right way and that there's nothing upside down or crooked or something wonky going on. So let's start with this one. This is my first signature. I know I want it to go first. I'm gonna flip through and just look for anything that's upside down or something that is not right. Or if I'm missing some pages, those all look good to me. Let's flip through this one and make sure I've got everything just right. That looks good to me. Okay, those look great. Something else you wanna look for is not all of the pages line up. So if it's a short page, then you wanna make sure it's centered the way that you want. Before I sew it in, I'm gonna to wanna to watch, because if this falls to the bottom, maybe I don't want it like that in the book, maybe I want it kind of more in the middle, or I can kind of push that up and down to fit the way that I think is best. So let's stack these up and start with our first signature. I'm gonna take my template, I'm gonna open up to the center, and for this, this one, I have made this envelope and I'm going to sew in the center of this envelope so that when I glue the envelope closed, that will be the center of my book. So this is the center of my signature and I'm going to flip through and make sure that I don't have anything that needs to be adjusted up or down. I wanna make sure that everything's lined up. That looks good to me. And because it's my first signature, we're going to follow along that first little line of holes. So we'll place this in there and you'll notice that my template is a little bit taller than my book pages. And that's because the cover is bigger than my pages so that it will kind of buffer around the edges. And while I do want it fairly centered, if I am going to choose a side, I'm gonna want more room at the bottom than I do the top. And that's because if the book ends up being slightly crooked or something happens, if the pages are sticking out of the bottom, I can't set the book down because the pages are sticking out. But if the pages kind of stick above it, it looks not very appealing, but functionally I can set the book down. So I'm just gonna favor the bottom a tiny bit more and make sure that I have a little bit more space down there than I do the top, while again, trying to keep it mostly centered. Once I have that the way I want, I am going to clip this end so that nothing moves. 
And now that is ready to stab. So just take the awl and you're just going to stab and you're gonna try to do it pretty straight out. So if I do it, you know, crooked and it comes out the side, then it's not gonna line up as nicely to the spine. So I'm going to just keep popping that out right along those holes, put my awl right there, turn it and poke it up to the sky. And again, that's about as far as I poke it through. That is my preferred poking length. I'm going to remove this, but keep everything clamped together. Okay, and let's bring our cover back in. And we need to decide what kind of string that we're gonna be using. So I brought this string. It is, uh, I don't know what this is called, a string. And it has several plies in it. How many plies? One, two, three, three plies. So this is some kind of string and it has three plies in it. Any string will work that is semi-tough. And I also have bookbinding string that I love to use, but I am out and for some reason I'm not ordering any more and I should just order more. But because I have this and I like to use this too, I just keep using this. But you can get bookbinding string in all kinds of different colors and this is a little bit slicker and it's very strong. It kind of has like this waxy outside. Anyway, it's really fabulous to use. I love using this. But the only color I have left is brown and I don't have a ton of it left. I don't want brown in this. I'd rather have white. So for those reasons, I am going to go with this. So let's measure and I just kind of measure two and a little bit. That is plenty, way more than we need. And then thread the needle. Okay, so once you have that threaded, then you start the coolest part. I love doing this. I could do this all day. Send me your journals and I'll stitch them all in for you. This is so fun. It's like the thrill of sewing, except for it's very short and easy to do. And you feel so awesome once it's done. And it's kind of beautiful and I just love this so much. So we're gonna take our string and we're gonna start by going in the center from the inside of the book to the outside of the book. So just dive in there and we're gonna come out there and line that up with the hole in the center in that first little column. Just like that. And pull it almost through. Just let some of that hang out just like that. Then we're going to go back through, going from the outside of the spine toward the center. We're gonna go up one. So while I'm still working in the beginning, they're not quite lined up yet. So I kind of do the cover first and then the signatures. And now that I have my first stitch, it's gonna be a little bit easier to do the other ones. All right, so now that we have that down the center, up the next one, we're gonna go down the top one. So from inside out, just like that. I'm gonna pull that nice and tight so that there's no gaps or bumps and it's not a loose string. If it is a loose string, then your pages won't be held in tightly, but they'll be kind of wonky. So no wonky pages, nice and tight. All right, so now that we're to this point, we're going to go back through that second to the top hole and just pierce that like that. Pulling it nice and tight. And then we get to jump over the center one. So from the second to the top to the second to the bottom, we're just gonna skip one and dive down in there. Okay, pulling that nice and tight. And now we're going to go down the bottom hole from the outside in. Pull it nice and tight. And now we're going to once again go through that second to the bottom hole um, from the inside out. Pull that nice and tight. Then our last stitch is going to be from that hole up through the center hole one last time. And as I do this one, I'm gonna kind of watch and I want to come up on the other side of that string. So if you see, there is that string in the center where we skipped across earlier. And then we have this piece that's on this side of that string. And I wanna come up through the other side. So pull it to where that string in the middle is in between this string and this string. 
And then that way, when I pull it tight, I can do a nice little knot. I'm gonna do a little square knot, right over left, left over right. And then I can trim the excess. And if you're gonna see them, you can tie them in a little bow, but I'm not really gonna see this. And if you're paranoid like me, you can grab a little glue and just put a little dot on that center knot. Let's make sure that's not going anywhere. And I didn't even accidentally sew it in upside down or something crazy that may or may not happen before. That's why you gotta double check everything. So look at that. We put pages in a book and that is so awesome. And to kind of conceal that and to turn this into an envelope, I'm just going to glue these two edges. Press that down there. And then no one will be able to see all that center string from sewing in our signatures. Pretty cool. Let's see, that's fairly straight, right? Looks nice. Okay, let's do it again. This is the one I want to be next. So I'm gonna find my template. And this time I'm gonna be working on the center column. Open up that envelope, making sure everything looks nice and aligned, top and bottom. Flipping through to see if there's any short pages that I want to either have above or below. I don't, oh, it's this page and that looks good right there. So I'm good there. Align this up to where there's just a little bit more on the bottom, but just barely, not that much. Clamp that on there, bust out your all, poke your holes. Slide out my little template. And round two of the fun part. I'm gonna need some more of the string. So once again, I'm going to measure it to be two and a half times the height of the book, which is more than enough. And then we're gonna thread the needle. All right, once that's on there, I'm gonna start from the center again, going from the inside to the outside, finding that second column, that middle hole, right there. Pull. Pull it through, about there is good. Just leaving myself some extra room. Then I'm gonna go to the next one up from the outside in. Find that little hole. Pull that nice and tight. Okay, then we're gonna go up one to where we're at the top hole now from the inside out. Pull it nice and tight. Now I'm gonna dive back through the second to the top hole from the outside in. Pull it nice and tight. Then I'm going to hop over that center one. Hop, and then we'll go from the inside out. Pull it nice and tight. Then we're gonna go to the bottom hole from the outside in. Pull it nice and tight. And we're gonna go up one to that second to the bottom one from the inside out. And then we're gonna come up through that center, keeping that string on the left side of the string that's going across and coming up through the right side so that I'm on either side of that center string. Pull it nice and tight, give it a square knot. Right over left, left over right. Trim it up, put our little glue if we're nervous, paranoid, or overkill everything. Then I can unclip those, and look, we did it again. This is so cool. <sighs> There's only one left, I know. You wanna do this all day because it's the most fun part of junk journaling, but we only get one more, so let's try to savor every moment and enjoy this. Open up to the center, make sure everything is aligned, make sure there's nothing that needs to go high or low. I don't think there's anything like that in this one. Find the last little column and line that up right there. Try to center it, favoring the bottom just a little bit more. Clip it on. Psh, psh. Grab your awl and stab. Remove the template. Grab the cover. Measure your string. And take a deep breath, because we're gonna do the best part again. In we go, through the center, going from the inside out. Then we're gonna go back down, um, just one up from the center. Pull that nice and tight, then dive down the top, 
from the inside out. Then we're gonna go back in on the second to the top hole right there. We're going to hop over the center to the second to the bottom hole. So jump, dive down in there. Then we're gonna come back through the very bottom one from the outside in, pull it tight, then go through one up from there, the second to the bottom from the inside out. And then this time our string came out the right side, so I'm gonna come up the left side as I go for my final stitch from the outside in, pull that through so that they're each on either side, pull it tight, do a square knot. Right over left, left over right. Cut it, glue it if you're paranoid. And we have done it. Look at those beautiful signatures in this book that we made. And now my drawing journal is done. This one is mine, which I'm really excited for because that means I can use my journaling prompts and we can make some videos um, about writing in your drunk journals. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, I made some journaling prompts and I'll have a link that you can get yours. Um, it's on my Buy Me A Coffee page. You don't have to purchase them. You can download them for free. If you'd like to support my channel, then you're welcome to make a donation and thank you so much. But if you don't want to, it's totally fine. They're free. You can download it and print them out. And I just put mine on little pieces of scrapbook paper so that they're kind of stiff and all ready to go. And I'm going to be using them in this journal. Oh my gosh, look what I did. I trapped this little bead and I wasn't careful when I sewed and that is stuck. So I am going to have to snip this and reattach it. That is really funny. Be free, little bead. Anyway, don't do that. <laughs> That's really funny. There's always something, right? I think you can do it perfect, but something will get you. Well, thanks so much for crafting with me, you guys. This was really fun, and I'm so excited to have my journal all complete. If you use this tutorial to sew in your signatures, or if you've done any of my other tutorials, I would love to see it. You can email me at katesjunkjournals at gmail.com, or you can just tag me on Instagram at, at katesjunkjournals. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week. <laughs>